We'll call case number 20-40645, Saltharini v. Karate USA. Good morning. May it please the Court. Your Honors, my name is Eric Wood. I represent the appellant in this case, Dr. Saltharini, on behalf of Karate Italy. Withdrawal, overdraw, payment, these are the words that the Court is required to construe in determining the issues in this case, which is, who made the payment to Bank of the West to discharge the $800,000 debt that was owed by the appellee, Karate USA? Was that payment made by BNL, or the Italian bank, or was it made by Karate Italy? Only one of them could have made the payment, and whichever one did has a right of subrogation against Karate USA to get repaid for that $800,000. But why wasn't BNL brought into this lawsuit? I mean, to me, I just find this a mystery. This money is clearly owed. The question is, who's it owed to? Why wasn't everybody just brought together in the same litigation, whether here or in Italy, and let's just get it done? I don't understand this. I think that the reason Karate, excuse me, BNL was not brought into this lawsuit was because it had no legal right against Karate USA. It filed a proof of claim, a sworn proof of claim, in the Italian Bankruptcy Court seeking to recover the very money we're talking about here based on an overdraft of an account that Karate Italy had. Again, that means, the word overdraft means a withdrawal of amount of money in excess of what you have. At BNL's— Karate USA said they'd had some, you know, phone call or something with BNL about, you know, getting them paid and so on and so forth, and there might be a double recovery issue and all that. And that, to me, just cries out for the need for intervention or bringing someone in. I realize there may be some jurisdictional or personal jurisdictional issue, but somewhere in the world there ought to be a court that could handle all of this, get you all in the same bucket, and then the money, you know, could be put in the registry of the court, and whoever you all is entitled to gets it. I just don't understand. They don't seem to be saying they don't owe the money. They just say they don't owe it to you, your client. Agree. They're not disputing that they owe the money to somebody. And the evidence you just pointed out, that's the only evidence of any efforts by BNL to ever collect against USA is the hearsay statement by Karate USA itself saying we might have had a conversation with BNL in the past where they might have said they were going to try to collect against us. Keep in mind, this debt was paid in December 2014. BNL has no legal standing at this point to collect from Karate USA because any claim would have been barred by limitations. And again, the reason it never brought a claim against Karate USA is because it legally never could bring such a claim. The money was loaned to Karate Italy and transferred from Karate Italy's account, 3045, to Karate USA. Well, BNL can't sue Karate USA. Are we done with the bankruptcy payments? I know you said there's this $165,000 or something that was paid, some amount of money that was paid in the bankruptcy by Karate Italy. Is anything more going to be paid to BNL in the bankruptcy? Absolutely. If we prevail in this lawsuit, that's— No, no, I understand that. But I'm saying, like, if this lawsuit just went away, what happens in the bankruptcy? The bankruptcy still is still ongoing, and Dr. Solferini is still trying to recover as much money as he can from various sources, including in this lawsuit, to distribute to its creditors, one of them being BNL. So the money that—if we prevail in this lawsuit, it's not like Karate Italy is going to get some kind of windfall like Karate USA claims. To the contrary, Karate Italy is going to bring in whatever money it can to the estate, and that money is going to get distributed to its creditors, including BNL, which is the party who loaned Karate Italy the money. What I'm asking is, if BNL can't—let's say that the bankruptcy door shut tomorrow, the case was over, it's done, and this—was it $115,000 or $165,000? Whatever it was, the amount of money that was paid during the bankruptcy that you all talked about, if that amount is all that's going to get paid, then why isn't that all that Karate USA owes? Because it received an $800,000 windfall. It has received—it owed Bank of the West $800,000 bank of—on a debt. Bank of the West recouped—or it recouped a repayment of that debt. By the definition of payment, it's paying of an obligation, discharge of a legal obligation. 
somebody, either Karate Italy or BNL, discharged that $800,000 obligation that USA had against Bank of the West. So it received that benefit. I can't go sue someone that got a windfall that I don't have anything to do with. So, I mean, the, the, the windfall isn't the problem. The problem is the obligation on Italy that you've raised. And what I'm saying is if Karate Italy no longer has any obligation, the bankruptcy shut down, there's no more money that's going to be paid to BNL, then why is not the only harm, however, however you look at it, wherever you put it, the amount that they've already paid? Well, I suppose if the bankruptcy is closed and that's all that they owe, then that would be the only one. But, but again, the bankruptcy court has authorized Dr. Solferini to bring this claim to try to recoup the money that was overdrawn on this account from Karate USA under an equitable subrogation and reimbursement claim, which it legally has standing to bring, to bring that money back into the estate to reimburse the creditors, including BNL, on this what, claim. What is the record evidence that Karate Italy paid the $800,000 to BNL? I don't understand why that's not either proven or not proven. It's, it's absolutely proven in multiple different ways. First of all being the letter of credit, this is the record at 253-259, which was issued on behalf of Bank of the West. The terms and conditions of that letter of credit, the record at 314, specifically allowed BNL to withdraw amounts, even if overdrawn, from Karate Italy's account for the purpose of satisfying that letter of credit. And again, that's why the importance of the word withdraw and overdraw come so into play. So you can say that's a payment. Correct. Then we have the receipt from Karate Italy, excuse me, from BNL to Karate Italy showing this transfer was made from BNL's account, the 3045 account, to Bank of the West. That receipt is at the record 830. Then we have Bank of the West's bank records. This is at the record 267 through 269, showing a transfer of the $800,000 from Karate Italy's account, account number 3045, to Bank of the West. Then we have Karate Italy's bank statement, record at 332, also showing that that money came from its account. If the money had come from Karate Italy directly, excuse me, BNL directly, those records would have all shown it came from some other account. None of the records show that it came from some other account. Every single piece of evidence shows that there was a debit to Karate Italy's account, again, this 3045 account, and that that money was transferred from that account to Bank of the West. But, but Counsel, wait, I want to make sure I'm following you. Um, building on Judge Clement's question, when you say the money was transferred out of the account, you're talking about an overdraft. Correct. Correct? Well, an overdraft isn't payment. Uh, otherwise, BNL wouldn't, I mean, if, if an overdraft, and I think you can define it as money that's not there, uh, if that satisfied um, Karate Italy's obligation to BNL, well, BNL, I mean, we wouldn't be here, would we? In other words, there wasn't the money there. Uh, so I don't think Karate Italy can really say that because its account was overdrawn, it made this payment. Is that your argument, or am I well, confused? Well, the, the, because of its, its agreement with BNL allowed it, it had a million dollar letter of credit. Right. It allowed it to take that money out. But there, no, 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 there wasn't any money there. Correct. So I think there's a distinction between taking money out and trying to draft an account that's empty. Well, the definition of overdraft means withdrawal of money from an account. So All right, well, then, then B&L is satisfied and there's no dispute here, right? Oh, well, B&L's not satisfied. I guess satisfied. I'm, I'm going to reorder my banking arrangements as well because I don't think my bank is going to be satisfied if my account's overdrawn. They may debit my account, but it's not there. Well, the, and then they have a, a right to try to recoup it back from you, but they don't have a right to try to recoup it from Karate USA, which is exactly what's happening here. B&L is saying, we loaned you this money. But I guess we paid the, it to pay off this debt. Now counsel, we're getting the, it back from you. We the, can't go get it from them. It's the, just the, like the I'm point sorry. I'm having trouble following is how Karate Italy has paid anything because there wasn't any money there, and they're the ones trying to recover from Karate USA. Well, th they did pay something. They they got a loan. They paid that money off the loan from BNL, and that money was transferred to Karate Italy or to Bank of the West for Karate Italy's benefit. Which again is the very definition well, of so the word of a payment. Back to the bankruptcy court issue. So I look now. The payment has been 165,000, of which 115,000 was for this debt. So, I, both numbers were right. Um, 
Right, that's the amount that's been repaid thus far. I, I, I get that, and that's why I'm wondering, you probably heard the argument in the last case, whether this is premature until the bankruptcy's done to see what Karate Italy actually pays BNL. Because if you're saying BNL can't sue Karate USA, can only sue Karate Italy, who's in bankruptcy, and let's say ultimately Karate Italy only pays a total of, let's say, 200000 to BNL, why isn't that all they can get? From well, the, the money is trying to recoup here is what it's trying to. So that's putting a little bit of putting the cart before the horse. It needs well, to it, recover. No, I mean it depends on who's the cart and who's the horse, right? So if if you're going to claim that they should have at least paid the hundred and fifteen thousand, that's what's being paid presumably from other sources. You know, your your work. I, I don't know much about bankruptcy in Italy, but if it works anything like in the U.S., you're dealing with here's the mu bucket of money. Here's the bucket of debts. We're trying to put them together. If you're in bankruptcy, you rarely have enough money to pay all the debts, so we pay, you know, I think this was like a 3.9% and all of that. At some point, that's over. And so I'm just wondering, when that's over, why isn't that the number? Why isn't this more of a dismissal as premature situation than anything else, and we wait and see, and then that's what's owed? I mean, why isn't that the argument? Well, th that's the alternate argument that we're making, but I, I don't think we have to wait until that's determined. We, our position is, based on the definition of the words and based on what the records reflect, Karate Italy has a right to seek equitable reimbursement of that amount that it paid because, again, a payment is a discharge of an obligation. This obligation that Karate USA had to Bank of the West was discharged as a result of an action made by Karate Italy and BNL. So it has an equitable right to seek recruitment of that amount it, now, not later. Yeah, but if Karate Italy had just gotten a discharge in bankruptcy in total, having paid nothing to BNL, how could they, then why wouldn't they be getting a windfall of the 800000 I mean, I just, I don't know. I find, as I said, I get back to the fact that I don't know why BNL isn't here, because to me this is very convoluted. This money is owed. We just ain't going to pay it to you. We'll, we'll have a phone call with BNL. You say, well, BNL can't actually recover from them. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. It, it really, this case is very confusing to me about why we have this litigation instead of the core of the case being BNL isn't here. Well, it, it is confusing, and there are multiple different transactions going multiple different ways, but I think if you bring it back to the central core question of who made the payment, I think when you look at the summary judgment evidence, it all shows that the payment under the definition of the word was made by Karate Italy and that it therefore has the right to this reimbursement claim to bring that money back into its estate to distribute out to its creditors. Okay, and, and you keep saying that, so let me ask you this. If we were to say, absolutely, you're right, pay the 800000 and the money was shipped to Italy, would all of that go, uh, 800000 minus the 115 already paid, W would that have all gone to BNL, or would it go to their uh, their electric company and their other business people? I, I I don't know what other creditors or what other debts exist in that bankruptcy, so I don't know the answer to that question. But I presume a good chunk of it would go directly to, but not all BNL because or debt or whatever the right. And the, the bankruptcy court specifically approved that proof of claim. And and keep in mind again, going back to the meaning of the words. When BNL filed its proof of claim in the bankruptcy court, it used the words overdraw, which again means withdrawal of money out of an account that doesn't have enough in it. So had it had the money been paid by BNL directly, then it wouldn't have filed that as its proof of claim. It would have been a totally different proof of claim. The proof of claim that it filed said it was based on an overdraw of account 3045, which is Karate Italy's account. Then the bankruptcy court How much was the proof of claim? I'm sorry? How much was the proof of claim? It was for the full amount of the letter of credit, which is around a million dollars, of which 800000 directly related to this. And it specifies that in the proof of claim. It refers to it specifically, and the bankruptcy court's approval of the proof of claim specifically references that overdraft of the 3045 account. And furthermore, the bankruptcy's order allowing Dr. Solferini to bring this case also refers to the overdraw of the account, 3045, which again, this brings us back to a withdrawal of money out of that account that was transferred to pay off a debt, which okay, so but if we were to affirm, then what happens in the bankruptcy to this debt? What happens to the debt? Yeah. Well, Karate uh, BNL will not receive probably any more than it's already received unless Dr. Solferini can collect from other sources. I'm sorry, were you going to ask? 
I see I'm just about out of time. I'll, I'll save the rest for rebuttal. I'll just, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. You've saved time for rebuttal. May it please the court, my name is David Fine. I represent Karate USA in this matter. I'd like to begin with some of the issues that your honors raised when my, uh, I thought you might like that, your honor, uh, to, to use uh, Judge Wilson's phrase, that opposite counsel uh, discussed with you. Uh, the first thing is, Judge Wilson, I think you're entirely correct that if there was no money in the account, whatever happened here was not a payment by Karate Italy. Karate Italy had no money. The only way you could get to the idea that Karate Italy made the payment is if you concluded that being in debt to BNL is sufficient to say that it made the payment. But there are no cases that say that. My opponent has offered none, we have seen none, and I would submit that there are none. It had to actually make the payment. Now, Judge Haynes, you asked a couple of questions that I'd like to address. One was, uh, what I think is a fairly obvious question. Why isn't BNL here? Uh, from our perspective, we were confronted with a lawsuit that asked us to pay money for a debt that we didn't know. So we took it at face value, and instead of trying to interplead BNL, we took the case as it was, and we defended it as it was. Add to that, and I will acknowledge that this is not of record, um, so I hope you'll forgive me, but with that, with that codicil, BNL has made it fairly clear to us through the course of the litigation that it doesn't want to be involved in litigation in the United States. And there's probably a pretty good question about personal jurisdiction. So that's why we fought the fight that was presented to us on the turf on which it was presented. The other issue, Judge Haynes, that you raised that I'd like to address is that issue of timing. Because I think that, that gets a really important point. This might be a very different case if Karate Italy, or its trustee, I'll use the short form Karate Italy, had come to the district court and pleaded that it had paid back to BNL all of that $800,000. And if it had made a claim under the Texas statute 5.117B, because that provision addresses just this sort of scenario, where the applicant for a letter of credit seeks reimbursement Oh, I'm sorry, where the issuer of a letter of credit seeks reimbursement from the applicant for having paid out an amount. The problem is they never pleaded that claim and they never so proved it. So why do you all get the benefit of 54C and they don't? Why do we get the benefit of 54C? We well, get the, the attorney's fees. The attorney's fees are statutory. Get, they don't get it on the 115000 All right. Well, Your Honor, first of all, our entitlement to fees is as a prevailing party under the Texas statute, the statutory subrogation provision. The reason they don't get it for the 115,000 is number one, they didn't, they didn't receive it. Number two, they never properly pleaded it. They never pleaded a claim under subsection B, 5.117B, which is the only claim in the case for which that $115,000 would matter. And the first time they ever mentioned the $115,000 was in responding to our summary judgment motion. They never included it in an, any iteration of their complaint. They never included it in initial disclosures. They never told the court about that. It was sort of a Hail Mary at the tail end because I think they recognized that it, it didn't really pass the logic test to say that Karate Italy had made payments when it hadn't. So they said, well, by the way, we think there's $115,000. But we didn't have the opportunity to take discovery into that. The only evidence that they offer is Dr. Solferini in a declaration post-discovery saying that they paid $115,000. Well, that's too late. That's not how we do things. You plead it, you allow us the chance. You're saying the 54C entitlement doesn't apply because they're not entitled to show up after discovery's over and start playing this stuff that is floating around that they don't have evidence of. I think that's exactly right. Okay, but let's assume, arguendo, then, that we were to affirm and then the bankruptcy shut down tomorrow, but in the bankruptcy book, it made clear that BNL was paid $115,000 for this $800,000. Would, would 
Bank of Italy be able, I'm sorry, Cor Corrado of um, Corradi, Italy be able to sue you all, or would you be able to then claim race judicata so they can never get this 115,000? I, I think that's an interesting question. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the answer is. I do think that there are some race judicata implications. But they're of, if there's a problem there with race judicata, it's of Karate Italy's own making. All they had to do was go to the district judge and say, we would appreciate leave to amend to be freely granted under Froman against Davis. And we'd like to plead that, yes, we've now made this payment and, subject, and, and be subjected to discovery so that we could look into it. And I'll note, uh, and, and I don't want to sort of run down the rabbit hole, if you will, on this, but we, we would not take on faith what Dr. Solferini says in a declaration, because he's the same fellow who at the beginning of the case, and we, this is of record, at the beginning of the case gave us the bank statement, but redacted out the part that said that it was, it was at a negative balance. So his credibility is not uh, a shining example of veracity, shall we say. So, Yes, is it possible that if they brought another lawsuit that our response would be race judicata? It is possible, but that's not our fault. But if B&L sued you all, so let's say we affirm B&L sues you tomorrow, wouldn't you claim credit for that $115,000? you would say you, well, we only owe six eighty-five, dollars whatever the math is? I think we would probably take third-party discovery of Karate Italy to find out what really happened, or of BNL, right? Because BNL allegedly. Okay, but let's say it. it's true that the 115 was paid. BNL shouldn't recover a full 800 from you, and so wouldn't you guys claim that? So then you really would get the windfall of the 115. I mean, what if, I don't understand is y'all say you owe the money, but you don't want to pay it. You're not willing to pay anybody. You're not willing to pay BNL. You're not paying these guys, and we just we sit here having this litigation about money that's owed instead of the money being paid. Your Honor, the answer, the answer to your inquiry is uh, that it, it rests respectfully on a false presumption, which is that my client doesn't want to pay. As, as is in the record, we have had discussions with BNL. Now, it's been sort of put on hold because of this litigation, because we didn't want to, to be sort of double charged. But my client has had discussions with BNL about paying back BNL. So Karate USA has never taken the position that it should sort of get the benefit of, you know, throw these two cats in a bag and let them fight, and we get to walk away with $800,000. That's never been my client's position. My client's position is, it doesn't want to pay somebody who didn't pay it out in the first place, and then have B&L come in and say, by the way, we actually paid it, so now pay it again, so that you end up paying. You pay B&L 685, because they already got 115000 are you going to pay that 115000 to Bank of Italy, if we were to affirm? Your Honor, I don't know the answer to that because I don't uh, know what the I circumstances are. I know the answer. Are. No. And that just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, if it is 115000 again, that's, that's uh, as they say in trial courts, facts, facts not in evidence. But if, if I could sort of back the truck up just a little bit to that question of payment. Who made the payment here? Because I, I, I do agree with my friend across the aisle that that's, that's the critical question. And the answer to that is that BNL made the payment. And Judge Wilson made, I think, sort of the critical point, which was there was no money in Karate Italy's account. And you can see that if you, if you actually look at the bank statement that's been so much discussed in the case, which is in the record at uh, uh, page 515, the account has only debits. It has no, it has no uh, credits. Their theory seems to be somehow that BNL poured $800,000 into the account and then Karate Italy sent it back out. But that never happened. The only thing that's reflected on here is the overdraft, the negative balance, increased by $800,000. So it's just in the red more than it had been. And that's not a payment, even by the definition that they offer to the district court, which interestingly they don't offer in this court from Black's Law Dictionary. A payment is taking something over which you've had dominion or control and sending it to somebody else. Well, they never had dominion and control over $800,000 that was sent to Bank of the West. And the reason for that, well, let's, let's go back and sort of look at the framework of this case. 
and not forget where it all started. It all began with a letter of credit, and it was a letter of credit in which the issuer was B&L, the applicant was Karate Italy, and the beneficiary was Bank of the West. There was a legal obligation, a contractual obligation between B&L and Bank of the West that if certain conditions were not met or certain contingencies arose, then B&L would pay Bank of the West. That was the legal obligation. One of those obligations arose and B&L made that payment to Bank of the West. There was never a legal obligation on the part of Karate Italy for it to pay Bank of the West anything. My opponents never pointed any, and there isn't any, because that's not how letters of credit work. Letters of credit are between financial institutions to secure loans and, and things along those lines, and that's exactly what happened here. That also, by the way, creates another problem for my opponent, which is that to get subrogation, it's got to be an involuntary payment. If somehow Karate Italy had made a payment directly to Bank of the West, it wasn't pursuant to any legal obligation, as I've just said, because this whole thing gets down to the letter of credit. And so it would have been a voluntary transfer. So it wouldn't be the subject of, uh, the proper subject of a claim for subrogation. But the bottom line is, we know that there wasn't a payment from Karate Italy because it didn't have the money. And indeed, at points, my opponent acknowledges that because he says there was an overdraft, there was money owed, we owe more money. Well, let's, let's stipulate to that. They owe more money. But that doesn't get them where they need to go with respect to any of the causes of action that they've raised. We have said to this court, as we said to the district court, all of them require proof of actual payment. You have to be out of pocket. And they haven't been. And they've offered you no authority that says that on any of their causes of action, they can succeed without actually having made that payment. And the last thing that I'll note on the issue of payment is the issue of collateral estoppel, which we address in our briefs. The district judge did not reach it, uh, but he didn't need to, of course, because this court can always affirm uh, on any basis present in the record, um, particularly one that was, that was offered to the district court. And on the collateral estoppel front, we have a situation in which BNL said to the bankruptcy court in Italy, a competent court, competent jurisdiction, we paid $800,000 or 650 euros or whatever it would be now uh, with the exchange rate, and we should be able to make a claim against the bankruptcy estate of Karate Italy. Karate Italy was present in the suit. It had an opportunity to oppose that. It did oppose it, not on the merits, but only saying something about the timing of whether it was pre-petition uh, pre -petition obligation or post-petition obligation. And the Italian bankruptcy court said, BNL, you're right. You made the payment, and therefore you have a claim against the Karate Italy estate. And Karate Italy is a stop from opposing that. Therefore, the district court was correct on the merits of the suit. The district court was also correct on the issue of uh, attorney's fees. And I'll address just two points very quickly on that issue and of course uh, be very eager to address any questions that the court has. There were really only two defenses that my opponent offered on the attorney fee issue. One, well, three. One was we shouldn't have prevailed. Um, obviously, we think that uh, isn't the case, and if the court agrees with us on the merits, then it need not delve into that particular defense on the attorney's fees. The second thing was this argument that somehow we waived the ability to raise attorney's fees. And the answer to that is that under Engel against teleprompter, this court's authority, you don't waive a request for attorney's fees as long as it was made early enough in the case for the other side to have a heads up, if you will, and as long as there's no question but that attorney's fees are available. Here, it is true that we did not raise the attorney's fee issue in our answer. However, we did in our initial disclosure mere weeks after filing the answer, so they knew that attorney's fees were at issue. And there can be no question but that attorney's fees are available because the statute 
the, the statutory subrogation statute in Texas allows the prevailing party to recover attorney's fees. Indeed, they made a claim for attorney's fees under that provision, so they would be very hard pressed to deny the availability. So there was no waiver, and the district court was correct and did not abuse its discretion in determining that there was no waiver. The only other issue that they raise is this suggestion that under Tony Gullo, the Texas authority, that my client did not properly segregate out work that was compensable from work that was non-compensable. And the answer to that is that Tony Gullo also says that there's an exception to that. And the exception is if the same work serves to prove or defend against issues that are compensable and issues that are non-compensable, then you can collect on that amount. And in this circumstance, as your honors can see from this argument and from the briefs, the big issue was who made the payment. And that crosses all the lines, the statutory claim and all of the common law claims. And so that's a common issue. Now, are there some small and discrete issues on which there's not that overlap? There were. And that's why we said to the district judge, we think it would be fair for you to discount the fees to take that into account. And he did just that. So there's no problem with segregation. We believe, your honors, that the court should affirm on the merits determination and the court should affirm on the fee determination and remand so that the district court can consider whether there should be an additional award of fees related to this appeal because they would likewise be available under the statute. Are there any other questions, your honors, that you have for me before I take my seat? I think we have your argument. Thank you very much. Thank you, your honor. All right. We'll hear rebuttal from Mr. Wood. Thank you, your honor. I'll try to touch on some of the highlights from Mr. Fine. First of all, with respect to the argument that there was never any obligation for Karate Italy to pay anything, that's absolutely not the case. The letter of credit itself, which was signed by Karate Italy when it applied for the letter of credit, specifically says, this is at the record 314, the client, Karate Italy, authorizes the bank, B&L, to withdraw amounts, including overdrawn amounts from its current account, which is the 3045 account, for an amount equal to the exposure resulting from the issuance of the standby letter of credit, which is the letter of credit we're talking about here, and that's exactly what happened. In terms of timing, we know that it wasn't a credit to its account after the fact, but rather that money was put in the account and transferred before. And how do we know that? We know it from both B&L's records and Bank of the West's records. Again, Bank of the West is the recipient of this money, and when you look at Bank of the West's bank records, it shows that that transfer came from the 3045 account in the name of Karate Italy. That means that the debit to the account happened first, and then the money was transferred to Bank of the West, not the other way around. If it was the other way around, Bank of the West's records would not reflect that that money came from Karate Italy's account, number 3045. It would have reflected that that money came from some other account with another number in the name of B&L, but that's not what the records reflect, so the timing of this is key. With respect to the collateral estoppel argument, first of all, it was never even argued in the bankruptcy court as to who made the payment, who didn't make the payment. So the bankruptcy court never made a ruling on that, but the rulings that were made are consistent with the positions that the parties are taking here. Again, B&L submitted a proof of claim based on the overdrawn amounts from this account. Dr. Solferini initially objected to that claim because he hadn't seen all the records yet. When he was provided with, and the court was provided with the records, including the one I just read to you, the bankruptcy court said, well, yes, they did have the right to overdraw on that account because there was a prior document that allowed that to happen, and therefore the bankruptcy court allowed the proof of claim. So everything that happened in the bankruptcy court, to the extent it even is relevant here, is entirely consistent with the positions Dr. Solferini is arguing here. Counsel, it's entirely consistent with the idea that B&L actually paid Bank of the West the $800,000. That's not what it argued, and that's not what the Italian court found, I don't believe. What it said was it loaned that money to Karate Italy, and that's why it's asserting a claim against Karate Italy. 
in that case. Well, it paid the money to Bank of the West on behalf of Karate Italy based on the letter of credit, though, right? It deposited the money in, into Karate Italy's account and then to transfer the money from that account to Bank of the West. That's, that's the order of how things... Per the letter of credit, though. In other words, B&L wasn't giving Karate Italy income that Karate Italy would otherwise have or any other funding that Karate Italy would otherwise have. B&L was complying with its obligations under the letter of credit in favor of Bank of the West, right? Correct. And it was also complying with its obligations under its line of credit with, with Karate Italy. So th these were working, they were working in tandem. We're, we're not just, if, if the, just the letter of credit was at issue here, this would be a very simple case, but it wasn't. There were these separate agreements and the separate line of credit which protected B&L in this case. It wasn't so that we're not talking just about the letter of credit. And again, it gave them the right because of the... Well, but, you know, as I understand letters of credit, and I've, I've had a little bit of experience with this in, in law practice, I mean, of course the, the bank, B&L, who is the issuer of the letter of credit, is not going to just give the money. I mean, they're going to look back to whomever is the applicant, I guess, which would be Karate Italy in this case, to pay them back if the letter of credit's called, right? They could. That doesn't mean that Karate Italy made the payment. Well, but in, in, in this particular instance, they had the, the unfettered right to demand that money under the line of credit, which is exactly what happened here. They had a million-dollar line of credit for the specific purpose of that. Let's say, as a hypothetical, Karate Italy used this line of credit and, and, and we had that money deposited in its account and took it out in cash and then handed it over to Bank of the West. Would there be any dispute that it would have a, a, a subrogation right? Well, this is no different. The only difference is that this was an electronic transaction instead of a cash transaction. The fact of the matter is, under the line of credit, Karate Italy had the right to, the unfettered right to demand that money, and then that money could be transferred over to Bank of the West, and it now has an equitable right to seek reimbursement of that money. I, I see that I'm out of time. If I answer any other questions, if you have any. Thank you very much. We have y'all's argument. We appreciate it very much. The case is under submission. And we will take a five-minute break and return for the final.